What company is helping people cool down in the warmer months and making a killing in the process? Stick around to find out. Hey everyone, Stock Ninja here. Welcome back. This is episode 6 of Who Beat the S&P 500. In this series, we discuss great companies that have a proven track record of beating the S&P over the last 20 years. Let's see if this one is still a good buy today. Today's company was founded in 1993, making it back-to-back -back companies founded in the 1990s in this series. Purely coincidence, I promise I haven't planned it. Now, let's see what kind of returns this company has been delivering the last two decades. Had you invested $10,000 into this company exactly 20 years ago, with the dividends reinvested, you will be sitting on a grand total of $502,109.72 versus the $29,412.66 of the S&P. That's a spectacular 4,925.01% total return, over 25 times what the S&P would have given you at an amazing rate of 21.62% average annual return versus the 5.54% of the S&P in the same time frame. So, what company is the leader in all things related to pools? I hope you guess a pool corporation because that's who we're going to be talking about today. A smaller company with a market cap of around $10 billion, Pool Corporation is fittingly in the Russell 1000 index of small cap companies. As you might have guessed, the Pool Corporation trades with the ticker symbol POOL and is situated within the consumer cyclical or otherwise known as a consumer discretionary sector. When looking at their dividend, it is noticeably on the lower end at 0.92%, but their payout ratio is also low at only 38%, with payout ratios between 35% and 55%, considered to be in the sweet spot. Pool's dividend is well positioned for safety and continued growth. Speaking of which, Pool Corporation has grown their dividend for the last 10 years. Those 10 years of growth could easily have been 15 years, but with the only blip in 2009 and 2010, where it remained the same. Overall, the 10-year CAGR or compound annual growth rate is currently at 14.98% and showing signs of picking up when comparing to the 19.83% five-year CAGR. With a somewhat high PE ratio and lower dividend yield, POOL might be a better fit for a growth portfolio than a dividend portfolio. Pool Corporation's revenue has been steadily increasing in the last 10 years, going from $2.36 billion in fiscal year 2015 to $3.2 billion in fiscal year 2019. A 35% increase in revenue over 5 years at around 7% a year, showing a lot of strength in their business. Looking at a broad overview of their business, Pool Corporation makes their money by acting as a middleman between manufacturers and third-party companies. They can do this for a few main reasons. The pool season is very seasonal, with the majority of pool activity occurring during the summer months, primarily the second and third quarters. This enables them to source cheap products from manufacturers and delay payments till peak operation times. Also, they're able to house a lot of inventory in their warehouses, otherwise referred to as centralized shipping locations, and 373 sales centers where most of their business is conducted. The states of California, Texas, Florida, and Arizona make up 52% of overall revenue, with North America making up a combined 94%, with the remaining 5% coming from Europe and the last 1% coming from Australia. With over 200,000 Pool Corporation branded products and 600 product lines and approximately 50 product categories, Pool Corporation is constantly tailoring in evaluating their product lines to make sure they find the products with the best long-term growth potential. The chemical product category makes up 12% of all sales and no other product category accounts for greater than 10% of sales. When looking closer at their 120,000 customers, most of them can be attributed as small family-owned businesses with relatively limited capital resources. It is also important to note that no one customer makes up more than 10% of all sales, which is key especially in a very cyclical market and for diversity. One of the main reasons that I believe Pool Corporation has done so well is their marketing strategy. They put a lot of emphasis on promoting their customers and providing them with ample resources across their vast network to help them grow their businesses. When their customers succeed, ultimately Pool Corporation succeeds. A simple yet effective strategy that I think will continue to grow the company. That being said, one of the major risk factors when investing in pool 
is to remember no matter how diversified their income across North America is, any major weather events or black swan type of situation seen in 2020 could have adverse effects on revenue. Now, let's see how the company fared in the dot-com bubble crash, the great financial recession, and how it's currently trading during the downturn in 2020. Pool fell 34.74% during this time period, but when looking at the chart, it just looks like more of a normal fluctuation than a crash for the company. When comparing that to the S&P's 50.41% decline, Pool comes out far ahead. When looking at the great financial crisis, Pool fell 73.79% compared to a 57.61% decline by the S&P. The S&P doing comfortably better here. During the downturn in 2020, Pool fell a similar 32.68% compared to the S&P's 35.59% decline. The interesting thing is what came after the bottom. Pool not only climbed out of the March 23rd lows, it also reached all-time highs not long after, so far outpacing the S&P in terms of recovery. Headquartered in Covington, Louisiana, Pool Corporation currently has around 4,500 full-time employees located across 375 sales centers in North America, Europe, and Australia. Pool Corporation was led by former CEO Perez de la Mesa since 1999 until just recently in 2019. De La Mesa navigated the company through two recessions before retiring in 2019 while still retaining a position on the board of directors. Pete Arvin, the new CEO, was appointed in January 2019. Arvin has been tested with the current downturn in 2020. In all cases, Pool Corporation has proven to be resilient, currently sitting only a little way off from its all-time highs on June 1st, 2020. When looking at the management team as a whole, there is about a 50-50 split in terms of longtime Pool Corporation veterans and new hires at the company. Now, when we look at how the stock price has performed since Arvin has taken over in early 2019, we can see an impressive 69.73% increase. Moving on to the institutional shareholders, for the first time in this series, we have BlackRock holding the top spot with a 9.46% overall shares within Pool, edging out Vanguard's 9.04% stake in the company. Kane Anderson and Newberger bring up the third and fourth places, along with JP Morgan, one of the largest banks in the country at fifth with a 4.09% stake. In my opinion, in a tough industry with a low barrier of entry paving way for stiff competition, Pool Corporation has proven itself time and time again and has come out on top every year. Their excellent management and marketing teams have proven themselves to shareholders over the years with the consistent revenue growth and the emphasis on customer care, staying geographically close to and maintaining good relationships from manufacturers to their customers. Pool Corporation has positioned itself to continue growing and rewarding their shareholders. Overall, a very cool company that I enjoyed researching, but at current share prices, personally, I think it's a little above my margin of safety. But Pool is a company I plan to keep a close eye on in the future. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Drop a comment below if you plan to buy Pool or even hit the pool soon. Till next time, Stock Ninja out. I am not a financial advisor and this video is for educational purposes only. Please do your own research before buying or selling any stocks seen in this video. Thank you.